Well, hello once again. I know what some of you are thinking. Does this junk shop not have a life? He does. He does indeed. But I've already fed the fish today. We turn now for improv Bible study to Genesis 35th chapter. Let's see how this goes. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Beth-el, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household, and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean, and change your garments. And let us arise, and go up to Beth-el, and I will make there an altar unto God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and was with me in the way which I went. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand, and all their earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. And they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them, and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. So Jacob came to Luz, which is in the land of Canaan, that is, Beth-el, he and all the people that were with him. And he built there an altar, and called the place El-Beth-el, because there God appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. But Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died, and she was buried beneath Beth-el under an oak, and the name of it was called alon Bakuth. And Jake, uh, God appeared unto Jacob again when he came out of Paddan Aram and blessed him. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac, to thee I will give it, and to thy seed after thee will I give the land. And God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, even a pillar of stone, and he poured a drink offering thereon, and he poured oil thereon. And Jacob called the name of the place where God spake with him Beth-el. And they journeyed from Beth-el, and there was but a little way to come to Ephrath, and Rachel travailed, and she had hard labor. And it came to pass, when she was in hard labor, that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. And it came to pass, as her soul was in departing, for she died, that she called his name Ben-Oni, but his father called him Benjamin. And Rachel died, and was buried in the way to Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. And Jacob set a pillar upon her grave, that is the pillar of Rachel's grave unto this day. And Israel journeyed, and spread his tent beyond the tower of Adar. Now it came to pass, when Israel dwelt in that land, that Reuben went and lay with Bilhah his father's concubine, and Israel heard it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve, the sons of Leah, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, and Simeon, and Levi, and Judah, and Issachar, and Zebulun, the sons of Rachel, Joseph, and Benjamin, and the sons of Bilhah, Rachel's handmaid, Dan, and Naphtali, and the sons of Zilpah, Leah's handmaid, Gad, and Asher. These are the sons of Jacob, which were born to him in Paddan Aram. And Jacob came unto Isaac his father, unto Mamre, unto the city of Arba, which is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac sojourned. And the days of Isaac were a hundred and fourscore years. And Isaac gave up the ghost, and died, and was gathered unto his people, being old and full of days. And his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. And that's Genesis chapter 35. Okay, my thought is that this is another one of those times like Genesis 1, where you've got two different explanations of how something came to be that have gone down through various branches of the family and they've somehow ended up compiled in the same place. Because if you remember from earlier, when Jacob was heading eastward unto Laban earlier, I just say earlier twice. Sorry about that. Welcome to Improv Bible Study. Um, the story of how the name of the place came to be called Beth-El rather than Luz, and where the pillar of stone there came from, and the story of Jacob setting up uh, a sort of makeshift altar and, and pouring out an offering of oil. 
we've already done that some considerable amount of time before. So either he's doing it again in sort of honor of what came before, or this is just the some other version of the story that came down the generations through one of his twelve sons. Uh, Rebecca's nurse died and was buried. Rachel died in childbirth, giving birth to a son she wanted to call Ben Oni, but uh, his father either decided against that or misheard it, and we got Benjamin instead. Uh, a little bit of genealogy, making sure we know which wives and handmaids all of the sons came from. Isaac died at 180. And did you catch today's bit of weirdness that just got sort of glossed over? Remember recently when uh, the angelic host came down and met Jacob back in chapter 32, and it was just mentioned that he named the place, you know, Angelville or whatever, and never mentions it again? Well, buried in here, amidst this, you know, here's how this generation of the family sort of wraps up before we get on to the, the rest of the story, is verse 22. And it came to pass, when Israel dwelt in that land, that Reuben went in and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine, and Israel heard it. And that's it. Bilhah, the handmaid of Jacob, Israel's favored wife, Rachel, remember, the good-looking one, the one he wanted to begin with, who couldn't have children, who gave Jacob Bilhah, her handmaid, to surrogate produce for him. Reuben, firstborn of Jacob and his first wife, sleeps with his father's concubine, Israel found out about it, and nothing more is ever said of it. That strikes me as strange. There seems like there should be more of a story there. I'm not sure I'd trade stick magic for the story of this conversation and the fallout from there. Um, but there have been some chapters that I think we would all gladly trade to have the continuation of that story, but we don't get it. So, then just the bulk of the previous generation dies, we wrap up 35, and we move into 36, which will be coming to you again soon. Let me know in the comments below which previous chapter you would trade out to know the outcome of Jacob's firstborn son being caught having slept with his father's concubine. What would you toss out and trade for the rest of that story? Make sure you're hitting the thumbs up. Uh, as always, the rest of the playlist should be right here if you've missed anything along the way. And uh, if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Everybody take care, be safe, and we'll see you again before too long.